The following is a special presentation of Fox 31 and our ongoing commitment to the military. The Fox 31 Problem Solvers, serving those who serve. How do we honor those who served? The soldiers and sailors, the airmen and the Marines with a connection to Colorado who gave some of their life or all of it. I think uh, serving our country is probably one of the greatest callings a person can answer. How can we thank them for their selflessness, for their family sacrifice? Right here on a calm and quiet lawn in Southwest Denver, a patriotic few pay tribute every day. This is their office. It is their job to tend to the infinite rows of granite and marble where American heroes rest in peace. It's veterans taking care of veterans in such an obvious way. All these veterans out here, interred out here, they're all, they're all heroes as far as I'm concerned. Those men and women whose legacies are etched in stone. On this Memorial Day, Fox 31 is privileged to tell you the stories of some of the 120,000 men and women buried here at Fort Logan National Cemetery and the people who take care of this field of honor. Good evening and thank you for spending part of your Memorial Day with us. I'm Jeremy Hubbard here at one of the most humbling places in all of Colorado, Fort Logan National Cemetery. This weekend, just as they do every year, volunteers placed flags at each and every gravesite in tribute to the veterans and their family members buried here. You may be surprised to know this is a place with a close connection to Memorial Day. Fort Logan's named for General John Logan, the man who gets much of the credit for making Memorial Day a national holiday. On March 3, 1868, General Logan issued General Order No. 11, calling for a national day of remembrance for those killed in the Civil War. That order was the basis for what later became Memorial Day. He has a place etched in history, just as this cemetery and some well-known people interred here do. It all started 128 years ago with this very headstone, Mabel Peterkin, the daughter of an army private, the very first person buried at Fort Logan back in 1889. Since then, there have been countless notables buried here, like CSU graduate William Adams, a Vietnam helicopter pilot shot down while trying to rescue three of his fellow soldiers. He was given the Medal of Honor after he died. So was First Sergeant Maximo Yabis. He used his body as a shield to protect his fellow soldiers before he was gunned down in Vietnam 50 years ago. Navy SEAL Danny Dietz Jr. of Littleton is buried here too. Killed in a firefight a decade ago in the mountains of Afghanistan, they even made a movie, Lone Survivor, about that deadly attack. And in this maze of headstones, you'll find two other boys who touched all of Colorado and the entire nation. Kyle Albert Velasquez, gunned down on April 20th, 1999, at Columbine High School, just 16 years old. The son of a sailor, Kyle was buried here with full military honors. And buried right next to him is Stephen Robert Kernow, just 14 years old, the youngest of the teens killed that day at Columbine. He had dreamed of being a Navy Top Gun pilot, so it's only fitting that he now rests here among so many of his heroes. But for every memorable name etched on a headstone here, there are at least 10,000 you've probably never heard of. And some of the least known are some of the most visited. In fact, a woman named Nancy Sickler may have the distinction of being the most visited person interred here at Fort Logan. That's because as Fox 31 photojournalist John Martin found out, Nancy's heartbroken husband, an old Marine named Arthur, spends nearly every free moment out here just to be by Nancy's side. I go to all the cemeteries all over, and there's no point in naming them, but they don't come close to this. I've been here almost every day. Uh, two or three times a day, 
an hour or so at that time. Here a lot. Uh, that's why they wave at me. They think I'm part of their crew. I'm here all the time. We came here 20 years ago looking at different cemeteries and we decided here's where we were going. Uh, we thought I'd be first. Now I think it's better this way because I wouldn't I wouldn't want her to hurt like this. But uh, I say the Marine Corps certainly didn't teach me how to cry, but she has. I just don't know where else to go without her. Oh, uh, Nancy. I love you, Amy. Miss you. And she left. Wherever she's at, I'd like to go there. <laughs> that sounds bad, but this is no fun without her. We only had like 11,000 miles on that car when Nancy died. In two and a half years, it's got almost 60,000, and they're all from here to the house. As long as I'm alive, I'm gonna see she's got flowers. And I don't know where else I'd go. A love story between Arthur and Nancy that has long outlasted until death do us part. So if you see Arthur out here, ask him about his wife Nancy, the love of his life. When we come back tonight, the caretakers meet the men and women who work here, devoting their lives to this special place, including a Marine who lost his arm in Afghanistan. Honor and respect our veterans, our nation's greatest final resting place. And as we go to break tonight, meet one of the special people behind the scenes at Fort Logan. He's a veteran who holds a special place in U.S. history. He tells us in his own words why he works here. is James O'Neill Hughes. I'm a staff assistant here at Fort Logan National Cemetery. And I work here at Fort Logan because I enjoy working with veterans and their families, kind of like taking care of their last need. I was a hostage in Iran in 1979. It's not something I discuss a lot. I was a hostage for 16 days. And it's like anything, you know, you all over the place for 15 minutes and then the next day something else takes over the news so I like to tell people I've had my 15 seconds or 15 minutes of fame and call it a day. They uh, finally awarded us a prisoner of war medal I would say about five years ago and we had a ceremony here at Fort Logan where I was awarded the medal and uh, it was a long time coming. One of the things I like about all these stones and being out here is if I'm having a bad day, I just like to come out and walk among the stones because it's so peaceful, it's quiet, and a lot of people don't realize that each headstone has its own story. Welcome back on this Memorial Day as we pay tribute to the veterans laid to rest at one of the most hallowed places in all of Colorado, Fort Logan National Cemetery. Their grave sites tended to by a crew of mostly veterans. Some nearly died on the battlefield. Now, as Fox 31 photojournalist George Taylor shows us, they found a new way to serve their country. Fort Logan, it's a place of honor. You know, it's, this is hallowed ground. It's well over 200 acres and continuing to grow. Oh, I love it out here. I think it's, it's an absolutely beautiful cemetery. This time of year, we're scrambling, trying to fix the irrigation issues, <laughs> trying to get the grass to look right. With Memorial Day just around the corner, everyone 
who works here is great. We all get along well together. We have to be extremely delicate. Now, death is one of those hard things for everybody. And it gives families a sense of closure. It gives the rest of the public a place to pause and reflect. They all are deserving of the utmost respect and honor. It's a, a heavy toll on some people to, to work around this with every, every family coming here is experiencing grief in some capacity. It gives me that sense of purpose and, and something to do. All these veterans out here, interred out here, they're all, they're all heroes as far as I'm concerned. Nine percent of our staff is veterans. We only have a few that are, have been civilians. Everyone else is a veteran here. The United States Marine Corps. I do come to work and feel a sense of continued service and that uh, I know that's extremely important to myself and others here. In the Army, I was a tanker. I was, I was on a tank crew for all eight years. To come here working with the amount of veterans that are employed here as well, it was kind of just like coming home. I was in the Army four years, spent 15 months in Iraq. So I stepped on an uh, improvised explosive device while conducting counterterrorism operations in Helmand Province, Afghanistan, back in November of 2009. And uh, as a result of that explosion, I lost my left hand at the wrist. It's, a, it's an easy cause to get behind. Everyone has something on a personal level that helps them come to work motivated and committed to improving everything here. Family members of the veteran or spouse who are being interred, it means a lot more to them to be able to see that it's veterans taking care of veterans in such an obvious way. It means a lot to me and a lot to all the other veterans that work out here and the, the families that we serve. Every family that, that we encounter here understands the same types of things that, say, my mother understands from my time in. Feels like I'm still serving. Feels like I'm still, still giving back and still part of, the, part of the team. Ultimately, I want people to view this cemetery as a destination. I want I want people visiting the Denver area to think that they have to come by Fort Logan before they leave. These monuments out here are intended to last. Uh, if it wasn't for them, you know, I, I wouldn't have had the opportunities that I had. They all are deserving of the utmost uh, respect and honor. We certainly will always strive to, to make it look better and better. Until, until it is close to perfect. These are the greatest our, our nation has to offer. Pay your respects, thank them, you know, for, for everything that they, they gave and sacrificed for all of us. It's, it's a shrine to what this country was built on. It's a lasting monument to the hard work and dedication that this country can put forth when it wants to. To remember that this is hallowed ground. It's a place of honor, a place of respect. Veterans taking care of veterans long after they serve their country. When we come back tonight, the promise. Every veteran is guaranteed military funeral honors, but not every veteran gets them. What they're doing here to change that. But before we go to break, the man who's in charge of Fort Logan tells us in his own words why he works here. My name's Joe Turnbach. I'm the director of Fort Logan National Cemetery. I work here because multiple times every day I, I get to meet somebody who's having one of the worst days of their lives and hopefully make it a little bit better. It's a team effort. I mean, it takes a lot of work and a lot of effort by many people to get this done. The best thing? is that it's a national shrine dedicated to our veterans and their families, the people that have served our country and sacrificed for their country. Welcome back as we pay tribute to a place that pays tribute to Colorado veterans, Fort Logan National Cemetery. Turns out not every veteran gets the funeral honors they're entitled to. So once a month, some patriotic people gather here to do something about that. As Fox 31 photojournalist Sean Toll shows us. Present honors. Today we're uh, 
going out and honoring all the veterans that did not get military honors in the last month. This was set up about approximately 10 years ago. We were seeing a lot of veterans not getting the honors that they were promised when they, when they uh, enlisted in the service. The next three will be the United States Air Force. And that's why we're here to ensure that they do get that. Thank you, Governor Marines. You do a great job as usual. I've lost two of the gentlemen out of my own unit. I know what, what that goes on for us, and we want to make sure that that family gets that same closure. Now, Bogart. My father was buried here a long time ago. Born now to the United States Navy. His name is Wayne G. Reynolds. My stepfather-in-law, Dennis's stepfather, passed away on March 27th. Frank Van Meter. When I found out through word of mouth that this service was available, I knew that it would be really important to him. Hey, it's so important to recognize people who have served their country. This is just really nice to be able to participate. I was blown away. Um, I really was just expecting to come in and stand around and watch something and leave. I didn't have any idea that I would feel so emotional. Wayne Reynolds. And then when my dad's name got read, it was, it was a big deal. I know that it would make him happy. We are just grateful for all the, the people and people like these military men who come here to honor those they don't even know and, and they're going to be sending them off. It's amazing that there's so much love here to, to take the time to do this. It's just to make sure that uh, those guys get what they deserve. giving those guys what they deserve and a little bit of closure for the families of American heroes. When we return tonight, the workload with 20 to 30 services every day here at Fort Logan, you'd think it'd be tough to make families feel special. Not so. There's no closure when you lose a mother. We'll show you coming up. And as we go to break tonight, meet another veteran who considers it his duty to work out here. He tells us why in his own words. My name is Mark Holmes. I'm the interment foreman here at Fort Logan National Cemetery. The uh, reason I work here is it's a great honor. I am a veteran myself. I want to continue serving veterans. This is my way uh, of serving them. You don't do this to, to get rich or for fame. You do this because it's what you want to do. Welcome back. There are about 20 to 30 services conducted every day out here at Fort Logan National Cemetery, and we are grateful to the family of Shirley Brocheski for allowing us to attend hers. The wife of a World War II Navy sailor, Shirley died back in December at nearly 90 years old, was cremated, and was interred out here earlier this month. closure. There's no closure when you lose a mother. While her remains are here, uh, she's in God's embrace. Because God has chosen surely from this life to himself, we commit her body to the earth. We are dust and unto dust we shall return. Surely may the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sunshine warm upon your face and the rain fall soft upon your fields. May your mornings bring joy and your evenings bring peace. May your troubles grow few as your blessings increase. May the saddest day of your future be no worse than the happiest day of your past. May your hands be forever clasped in friendship and your hearts join forever in love. Your life is very special. God has touched you in many ways. And may his blessing rest upon you and fill all your eternal coming days. Bless you then in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Shirley Brocheski, just one of the thousands interred here at Fort Logan every year. I'm Jeremy Hubbard. From all of us, a big thank you to all who have served. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you.